A question came from one of the listeners and they were asking about, you know, angels seem so much more perfect and better than human beings. So what is the level of angels compared to human beings? And we're going to get into that subject today. All right, guys, uh, I have found a nice secluded and quiet place in the park so I can give you uh, this talk and record this in peace without any animals and without any children. So uh, we're going to talk today about angels. And the reason why someone would bring up the topic of angels is because when you look at the way angels are in the scriptures, they're like perfect. They give glory to God. They praise God 24-7 and it's been eternity. Now here's the thing about human beings. How long can we give glory to God? Give it about four to six songs and we're done, right? Most people can't praise that long. They're not going to praise even for like five hours. And here are these angels doing it for eternity all day and all night. So where are angels compared to human beings, all right? I'm going to give you a scripture I talked about last week, which is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, that does say that angels are these ministering spirits sent to serve us, right? Us who are here to inherit salvation. Well, they're here to serve human beings, so does that mean they're lower? Well, it's not really definitive because just because someone's serving someone else doesn't actually mean they're lower. Like parents, parents serve their children, serve their babies. But does that mean they're lower than their babies? And the answer is no. And even in the scriptures, if you look at like Matthew chapter 20, verse 26, you know, Jesus is like, if you want to be great, you have to be the servant of all, right? So, you know, and if you took it from that perspective, wouldn't Jesus be lower than everyone else? Because when he was living on this earth, he was serving everyone. What was he doing? He was preaching to people. He was healing people. He was solving their issues and problems. So if we went by that logic, then we'd be saying that Jesus was lower than all the other people in the world, which is not true. So what we need to figure out is a surefire answer and reason why uh, human beings are higher than angels. So in order for us to understand this a bit better, uh, one thing we do need to understand is the story of Satan. Like We need to know this story in order to understand whether angels are higher or lower than us. When you think of the story, we know that Satan tempted Adam and Eve. And after the temptation, they fell and then human beings and angels fell together. If you look in Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 9, it shows that even Satan and his angels were sent down from heaven onto the earth. Right. So we know that there was a punishment because something bad happened. So the big question I want to give to you guys is why? Why would Satan be jealous? Why would Satan tempt Adam and Eve? Right? There's got to be a reason for it. Now here's the thing. If human beings were equal or lower than Satan, would he, would, is there a need to be jealous? Is there a need for him to try and tempt him and, and to get them to fall? And the answer is no. If you think about even right now, if me and my brother, right? I mean, if me and my brother have the exact same car, if, me and my, if my parents bought me and my brother the exact same car, we both have Honda Civics, we're not going to be jealous. We're not going to be like, oh my gosh, how come they got a Civic and I got a Civic, right? Or, God forbid, if I get a worse car than my brother. My brother gets the Honda Civic. And for those of you in my generation, we have these terrible cars called the Pinto and the Gremlin. You'll know the Gremlin. It's from the movie Wayne's World. So imagine I get the Pinto or Gremlin and my brother gets the Honda Civic. Then, of course, I would be jealous. Like, why would he get a better car? So if you think about that reasoning, the question comes to is why was Satan jealous of human beings? Right? That's a good question. It's because there was something better and something greater. Why would God create human beings in the first place if they were equal or lesser than angels? Like, why would you create something that's exactly the same or lower than what you already have? It kind of doesn't even make any sense that God would do it that way. It's kind of like us too. When we buy a new car, we're not looking for a worse car. We're looking for a better car. When we get a new house, we want to get a bigger house, a nicer house, a more luxurious house. The way we do it, we always want to upgrade, get something better and better. Angels are giving glory to God, praising God each and every day. They've been doing it for eternity. Why would God create human beings? It's because it's for something better. What's the number one thing that God wants more than anything else? 
right? And we need to know what type of God we have. Because if we know the type of God we have, then we can understand the thing that he really wants. So take a look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And that last sentence there talks about love. And it says, God is love. So we know that God is a being of love, which means if love is a central tenet, and you know, you can also see that in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. What are the two greatest commandments? The, the golden rule is to love God and love each other. So here it is, love is the greatest thing. So when we think about God and the reason why he created human beings, it has to do something with a higher level of love. Let's take a look at this uh, relationship between human beings and angels in terms of love, and then we'll be able to see why are they lower or how are they lower exactly. So what is the actual level between human beings and God? Like, is there an actual level of love that's higher than children of God? And there is. Let's take a look at the Old Testament in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. And it's very clear. It says, the maker, the maker with a big M, the maker of all things, the creator is your husband. In Isaiah 62, verse 5, it says the same thing. And it says, the builder with the big B, who is the builder, the creator of all things, God, once again, will marry you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. What is the level of love that we are expecting to become? What is the highest level of love? If God is a being of love, if love is the number one and most essential thing, then he couldn't be satisfied with just being a father, a parent. It's just like us too. We're not satisfied with just being a child to our parents. Eventually, we want to have our own family. We want to have our own husbands and wives. We want to look for the higher level of love. And what does that mean? It means that when Jesus came, we reached the level of angels or the level of children of God. But then there's a second coming. And what's that second coming supposed to be like? Well, there's an analogy in Matthew chapter 25, verse 1, that says that it's like 10 virgins waiting to meet their bridegroom. And that's what the time of the Lord's second coming is supposed to be about. What is the highest level between two people? It is not parent and child. Eventually, parents let go of their children, let them live their own lives. And the two parents, once again, are alone with each other because that is the highest level of love. When we really think about this, what does God want more than anything else? It is love. Are we higher than angels? Eventually, we're supposed to be. Eventually, right? When that last level comes, when we are receiving the Lord's second coming, we reach that level of bride and bridegroom. And this is why Satan was jealous. This is why Satan, through his jealousy, tempted mankind. And this is how we can have a much better idea of the difference in levels between humans and God and angels and God. All right. So I really, really hope it's something that really uh, that helped all of you guys when it comes to understanding our level compared to angels. Yes, we may not be like angels now. We might not be that perfect. But of course, all of us wait for the second coming and waiting for that relationship to reach that next level as bridegroom and bride. All right. Everyone have an amazing and awesome week. And I hope that uh, you guys will once again enjoy all the scenery we have here. Have a wonderful and awesome day. And we'll see you guys again next week. Bye bye.